Hey guys, welcome back to Think Making. I'm Anton and today I'll be reviewing the Prusa Steel Black Edition MK2 by Orbital Printing. So let's get to it. So just in case you don't know about Orbola Printing, they are a 3D printer manufacturing company based in Spain. They sell Prusa Steel upgrades for different printers and full 3D printer kits like this one. This is a Prusa Steel Black Edition MK2 and it's their latest and greatest. It's basically a Prusa MK2 on steroids. It is made out of solid steel sheets, it is very strong and has all the nice features you expect on an MK2. But this is a full review, so I will go over all the aspects of the printer. I will focus on four main things. Setup, build quality, software, and print quality. So let's kick it off with the setup. My printer came nicely packaged with protective foam sheets and boxes inside boxes to protect components. And believe me, there are a ton of components, so you should better clear out your area first. Also, this is a full DIY 3D printer kit. That means that everything will need to be assembled by you. From the frame, to the extruder, and the electronics, you have to assemble everything. Yes, this takes time, about 5 hours. But if you're a tinker and love building stuff, this will be an enjoyable experience. There is a very detailed online instruction manual with a ton of pictures that really helps getting things right the first time. Actually, I also did a full step-by-step -step video on how to set it up 2 weeks ago. So, in case you decide to pick one up for yourself, you can use that as a guide. Overall, the setup might take long, but with instructions, it is quite easy. And what about the build quality? Well, it's made out of freaking steel. This thing is built like a tank. The metal frame itself is super rigid. You can move it around or take it in the car without worrying that components might come loose, because it uses nylock knots to prevent that. The linear motion is super smooth because it uses IGO's polymer bearings. There is no play on the Z-axis because the lead screw is a motor shaft and it uses good quality polymer knots. The hot end is a genuine E3D Light 6, which means you might not get to print at 300 degrees but is reliable and modular. And it's being fed by a direct drive extruder so you should even be able to print flexibles. The heated bed is an MK42 bed with a PEI sheet to increase adhesion, which you will hardly find in other printers aside from the Prusa family. The rest of the electronics are what you would find in most printers, except for the controller which is an OVM20 Lite. This is basically an Arduino Mega with a RAMS 1.4 and DRV8825 drivers in a single board. But this one is made in Spain with higher quality components than those cheap boards you can get from China. It also uses an inductive probe for auto bed leveling so there's no need to do it manually. Cable management looks awesome with included drag chain and cable sleeving. Overall, the printer uses good quality components in a tough as hell frame which makes for an awesome build quality. Regarding the software, well, everything is quite easy. Orbital Printing has developed some software to update the printer's firmware without even needing the Arduino's IDE. And when it comes to slicing, there is no proprietary software so you can use your favorite slicer and adjust your settings. In my case, I love Cura so that is what I use. Orbital Printing even provides profiles for Slicer and Cura to get yourself started. The printer itself, just like the normal MK2, also has some nice tricks up its sleeve. I like how it has loading and unloading filament options, preheating presets for more materials, calibration procedures, auto leveling, and the live adjust Z option. But now, what have you been waiting for? Print quality. And I'll just go ahead and say it's amazing. And no wonder why, this printer has a very rigid frame a smooth motion system, and solid electronics. Sounds like a good combo. And it is evident by the way the prints look. Just check these out. Of course, I printed a calibration cube, and just look at how smooth the face is and how sharp the letters look. I measured it up, and accuracy is bang on for an FDM 3D printer. I always print Marvins, but this time I decided to go for something more... Marvin-y? So how about a Marvin, in a Marvin, in a Marvin? And what can I say? It's butter smooth, supports were easy to remove, and the overhangs look great. And the benchy also looks amazing. Just look at the bridging on the roof. It is perfect. Bravo. Bravo, Orbolo. But that's not all. I printed a ton of stuff with this printer. Like this 3D fill, you know, Meta Hacker's new mascot. 
this 3D printer nozzle stand I found to organize all the ones I had flying around, this tool holder for my new Grizzly Dave so everything is at a hand's reach, which I printed at a 0.3mm layer height to get a faster print, and these other tool holders as well, or this resin vat that I printed to have more colors for my resin printer ready to go, this low poly Bulbasaur designed by Flowalistic, this crazy fidget sphere, although I forgot to decrease the bearings, this vase to see how smooth and consistent the extrusion is, which by the way looks great. This FIFA World Cup trophy because, come on, everyone's talking about soccer right now. And this awesome bearing that is able to turn in any direction. This one had some tight tolerances and look how freely it moves. I also designed this terrarium stand and printed it with wood filament for a cooler look. I also printed the body, neck and head of, well, whatever this is I have to design for a class. And finally, I printed a 12 hole ocarina like the one in The Legend of Zelda. Plus, I printed the silver ring and a wooden stand to show it off. So, I think the prints look great. Surface finish is smooth, corners are sharp, steep overhangs are no problem due to the good cooling fan, and bed adhesion is amazing with that PEI sheet. My only failed prints have been those where I forgot to turn on supports in prints that needed them. Overall, the print quality is very very good. So, conclusion time. The Prusa Steel Black Edition MK2 by Orbital Printing is a full DIY 3D printer kit that requires a lot of assembly, but is made easy with an online instruction manual and hopefully even more with my video. It is also built like a tank. Solid steel sheets make this printer extremely rigid, freeing it of the artifacts created by flimsy frames. High quality electronics and auto bed leveling make this printer very reliable. You can also update the firmware without using the Arduino IDE and you will probably size your models using Cura keeping the software side very simple. Having tested this printer extensively, I can now give it a big thumbs up and recommend it to anyone who is looking for a reliable 3D printer that has great print quality at a fair price. This printer sells for $550, and judging by how good it is, I think it's a very good deal. Yet, I'll leave that up to you. If you wish to pick one up for yourself, I'll leave Orbital Printing's website down in the description along with any discount code I'm able to get you guys. I will also leave links to my build guide and the official instructions in case you need them. Well guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and smash that like button and if you loved it, consider supporting me through Patreon or by buying a cool t-shirt like this one in my merch store. If you don't want to miss any of my videos, don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell icon to receive notifications on new uploads. And if you're wondering what to watch next, check out these videos. Again guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.